I'm watching the Indians game. Um, How many games have they lost since the last time we spoke? I don't think any. I think. Oh, good. So, but but that's why this weekend sucked for me. I had a well, Liverpool. This weekend sucked for you. It was awesome. What are you talking about? Liverpool had a draw against uh, Manchester United, but we got we got the Guardians. uh, Used to be the Indians over wins, and you know. I've said before, I think that like the truest result you can get in, in sports betting is a baseball season win total. It's 162 okay. games. I mean, if, if you pick the right side, you're going to win. If you pick the wrong side, you're going to lose. You're not going to win or lose based on like one bad call or one fluky play across. Yeah, but I mean, also, there's a lot of games. Well, exactly. Right? So, like, even exactly. though we lost our best pitcher, it's well, that's, what, that's what I was getting at. So, like, there, there's very little variance in a bet that goes across 162 games unless your best pitcher who won the Cy Young has Tommy John surgery the first week of April. It's pretty bad luck. Yeah. So, that, uh, between that and Liverpool, uh, I don't know. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. So, do you want to recap? What do you want to do? I'm not going to ask how my weekend was. Oh, okay. Well, you, you just told me a story about your weekend. I thought oh. I kind of already knew, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you were in Boston. No, I had a great weekend. I went to Boston. The weather sucked. I always bring shit weather to Boston. That is a guarantee. That is a bet you can always cash. I was freezing. Had a great time at the Viva party. We did not end up going to the Celtics game. We elected to go to the casino, watch the women's game instead, and then stayed, had a nice steak dinner. Was this Was this Friday? That was Sunday. Okay, because I want to talk about. Did you not? You don't know what day the women's game was? No, I, I want no. The, well, you're such was, a bigot. Well, they played Friday. You don't care Sunday. about women's sports, John. Well, Murray, just say maybe, it. Just say you don't care about women's stop, sports. Stop talking for two seconds. They played Friday and Sunday. You know, before the finals, they do this thing called the semifinals, and that was on Friday night. I wanted to. I wanted to talk about that semifinal game, Iowa UConn. Did you watch that? I watched most of it. Well, did you, see said, the, did you see well, I, the? Did you see? So here's what happened. So I had UConn plus four. Okay, Chris okay. had Iowa money line. Joe and I had UConn plus four. At one point in time, UConn went down ten, and I'm like, okay, I have to be at the studio at eight a.m. I I'm gonna lose this bet, so I might as well get an extra fifteen minutes of sleep. And then, of course, I stayed up and project per- persisted to like check the score, score, refresh, refresh, refresh instead of going see, to bed. Did you see the play at the end of the game that everybody was talking? Of course, about? everybody so, saw. Well, so my, I thought that was like one of the dumbest controversies recently in sports. Like, okay. like when I like when I first saw the play, I said to myself, "What was your oh, initial thought when you first saw the play?" Terrible call. Correct. Me then too. Then I saw the other angles, and it was absolutely a moving screen of course it was and yes. yet there were people that were persisting acting like it was this like, okay, is well, why on social media anytime something happens you cannot react right away because people yeah. freak out and they might be right. wrong because you haven't been presented with all the facts you've seen one angle live on tv well this is what i want this is what i want to talk about i don't like this i don't like this approach of you can't call that in that situation. Well, why not? It was 100% a moving screen, and it would have freed up UConn's best player for a wide-open shot on an illegal play. Why would you possibly not call that? Well, I think a lot of people wanted Iowa to lose. Well, that, Did you that's see my di- tweet? Well, that's different. Did you see that's... my tweet? Everybody, I pissed off every single possible person. Every you know, single person. You know, with the that UConn, uh, I understand that people were rooting against Caitlin Clark. The UConn women's team isn't exactly an underdog. They've won 11 national championships in the last, like, 30 years. No so kidding. So why are you rooting for them? I don't, uh, I don't know why anybody was rooting for anybody. I just knew when it got to four that this team's a little high, and it landed, yeah. what, two, three? Yeah, I don't they even won know. by two. They won by yeah. two. Um, anyways, I don't, like that. I don't like that whole argument of, like, you can't call that there. You can't make the correct call in the biggest play of the game. Why not? That makes no sense. So uh, Saturday people get comes, so emotional. It's sports. Yeah, they can't contain themselves. But why can't why can't people watch the original play and say, "Oh, that's a bad call," and then see the replay and go, "Oh shit, I was wrong." Because that's what I did. Scott Van Pelt did. I saw history. Okay. I was like, cool. "Hey, 
I was wrong. I, was wrong. I didn't comment on it because I had UConn plus four. So I didn't want it to go to overtime. <laughs> Possibly. I was just like, just lose, just lose. We just middled the game with the guys who's guy whose house we're staying at. We're happy. He's happy. Let's go to bed. I thought it was a, I thought it was pretty entertaining. So Saturday comes, we've got a big liability on Purdue to win the title. Oh, I didn't they, know that. They beat NC State easily in the first game. So what are we rooting for in the second game? We need UConn big because we don't want to go into Monday night with Purdue, like a six-point favorite, five-and-a-half-point favorite, whatever they would have been against Alabama. Let's call it six. That would have been terrible for us. And Alabama just plays – I mean, could they have played any better than that? They hit everything. Not I mean, the everything. first half. I mean, I look, mean, we said this last last night on my Wager Talk show in regards to they're down four, and they played the best half of basketball yeah. in the first half we'd seen all year. Oh, yeah. They played awesome. So, fortunately, UConn does what UConn always does. They pulled away. They cover the spread. Uh, sun, so, Monday night, UConn – you want to talk about this rollover bet we had? Not really, because I'm not exactly happy with you about this. Well, Listen, I our audience you. voted. I was already mad at them that they didn't pick like a 40 to one long shot. So you and you're like, to lose. you wanted to lose. No, you're like, send me a dime. I say, okay, I'm going to send no, you a dime. No, no, 500. Yeah. I didn't send you a dime? No. That's why it was so little when you sent me today. Okay, got it. Sorry, it, time out. It was, it was a You're right. I sent you five for both of us. My bad. You're right. So okay. I sent you a nickel on Venmo, and you said, okay, I'm going to try to find the best money line out there for us yeah. each week, and I'm going to prove to our audience that it's going to be better. And in fact, it wasn't even half. It was, it was hot so much worse. fucking garbage. So so here's why, here, here's the thing. Like You were completely wrong. Plus 750 was a great Great bet. bet. I tweeted that last night. I said I owed them an apology. No, no, I'm talking about at the time it happened. Oh, yeah, definitely. And And I thought they were going to lose, like, sweet 16. Yeah. And then I was completely wrong. I thought that if we did a money line parlay of six games, that it would pay more. It didn't even And then you let your Superbook sports guys go ahead and do that. And I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. It didn't even pay – this is the most amazing thing about it. It's amazing enough that the money line parlay didn't pay the 750. It didn't even pay the pre-tournament odds. No, it didn't. They were it was a, insane. It was like the most bird brain idea you've ever had. And that's the only way I've yeah. ever been told to make a futures bet when you're that deep into the season if you're not of making course. it pre-flop, pre-season. Of course. And and it was the experiment blew up in your face. But how much money did you make? Not enough. So you made Kelly. Because I also thought, see, now I also was like, when I did the math, I was like, that doesn't make sense. I thought I had a nickel. No, no, no. And you had a nickel. So I thought we won 7,500. So you didn't pay any attention whatsoever, even when we were talking about it. John Murray, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. How could you not know the the numbers? Did you see how many favorites covered? But I. This was the chalkiest tournament in like years. I got my ass kicked. I screenshotted every bet as I made them and sent it to you. And you still didn't know what the numbers were? I took a picture of it and texted it to you. Yeah. You still don't. You don't even look at the text. I mean, I saw it. I'm just saying, like, the amount of money I lost over, like, the last month, that that doesn't even – it's it's like two bets. I I got two bets back. I understand that $2,000 is not a lot of money to you. I understand. It's not that it's not a lot of money. No, it's not. It's, it's just not. that it was a very terrible tournament. I looked at my picket sports and I was like, oh, going to go ahead and close that app. Don't need a gross reminder. Thank you very much. I learned nothing from this experiment. Okay. Oh, uh, I, I, I would still recommend rolling over. I think this UConn team is just something that is very unusual in recent sports history. Well, I know okay. they are. They, they cover. think they're an all- anomaly? They covered 12 out of 12 tournament games the last two years. They made it a lot of money for their backers. Yes, they are an anomaly. They are a powerhouse. They were, I think we laid minus 700 in the semifinal. And then we laid minus two. Now, mind you, this is us getting the best money line price every time. And it still paid like nothing. It's just, 
Yeah, it's yeah, an somebody anomaly. on on X asked her like, "You did not lay six thousand, uh, you know?" Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't and I was like, "No, we, I, we didn't." We didn't That's one but, we didn't do because I was like, "This is just ridiculous." The only way that I would have believed that the rollover would be such a failure would be if they just had all these upsets and they didn't have to play anybody. But they played Illinois. They played. Remember, Alabama. we said that they had the group of yeah. death bracket. They played Alabama, which was an okay team, and then. They played the team that was like the consensus other best team, and they just killed everybody. I, I don't know. I've never, I really, I've never seen anything like it. But you got to tip your cap to the voters in our poll. Hey, Plus seven, that I was did. A great bet. That was a great. Great. Bet. Our audience, great super sharp. Our audience. Yeah, they were. I'm very what proud of them. Of, what did you think of the game last night itself? Did you uh, watch it? You didn't watch. No, it. I did you not watch, watch it. You watched the national championship game. No, it was at 920. I had just been on a three and a half day bender in freaking Boston the yeah. night. Okay. Let me tell you what happened. Okay. So I get to the airport. It was a yes or no question. Did you watch the game? I get, yes, I get to the airport Friday. They say, we're going to have a bumpy flight. I slam a couple of nooners on the plane. I said, okay, fine. I get to Chris's Weren't house. You, hold on a second. Were you up there? Sponsoring a, a rival seltzer company? What do you mean? You had a couple. It's not a rival. One is vodka. One is tequila. And unfortunately, we're not on JetBlue flights yet. So you just got to take what you can get. All right, fair enough. Go ahead. So I had a couple of those. Then I get to Chris's house. I had a couple of Vivas. Then we went to dinner. I had uh, quite a bit of wine. And then I said, "Okay, you guys, we gotta go to bed." And then we get back to the house, and everybody wants to watch Iowa UConn. I'm like. We should be going to bed. We have to be at the studio early. Exhausted. Get to the studio. Bang that out. Yeah. I'm like, I need a nap. Absolutely did not take a nap. Shocker. And uh, started drinking some more Vivas. Went to the Viva event. I had four Vivas before the Viva event. What does that tell you? What kind of night that was going to be? Was we, we ordered was a black car to take us, and you can drink in the back of the black car. So I had four Vivas on the way to the Viva event. How long All was, of the how long DK guys are there. All of the Nesson guys are there. Sammy P starts buying shots. Pretty sure I told him to fuck off, and that was the last thing I said to him. I don't even I remember saying it. goodbye. He was – first of all, I don't understand this. Boston is like a big shot town. We're old. I should not be taking shots. Ew. Yeah. You he you tried to do that same thing to me when I was in Vegas, and I did take a shot with you, and it was yeah, not well, we, the smartest thing I've ever done. We always well, whenever you go to office bar, Chris always wants to do shots. Chris Paul Mary, uh, he bought me a shot last night while I was watching the championship game. So I, anyway, I know that you're right. You're right. Go ahead. So then Sammy gets Doctor McGillicuddy shots. I tell him to fuck off. Then he comes with tequila shots because he thought I just didn't want a Doctor McGillicuddy's. I don't even know who I, I think I made Claudia take that one, and then. The game's over. I lose. Chris and I were like yelling at each other because I had Bama plus 12, but I had already won Purdue in the under. It was just kind of this back and forth, back and forth. And his wife's like, we're going home. And I'm like, I don't want to go home. It's only 1130. So a whole group of us decide we're going to the casino. And next thing I know, it's three o'clock in the morning. And then I get back to Chris's house and it's now six o'clock in the morning. And I'm laying there wide awake with a pounding headache, very hungover. So Sunday was really rough. It took me a little while to get things going. Everybody decides to go back to the casino to watch the game of the sports book. And I'm like, I need a little bit. Like I got to take a shower. Like I cannot be like running around feeling the way that I feel and looking the way that I look. Mm -hmm. So then we get back. That's when I bought the $26 margarita. I was like, I got to get back on the wagon. Chris was pissed. I wouldn't drink Viva. And I said, I don't want to see another Viva until our mother's day event at the trop. When I invited you and you're not coming because apparently you have to hang out with your mom. But anyway, we're going to have a Mother's Day game with the Rays. I think the Rays play the Nats that week. No, no. You're not going to be there. They play the Nationals in June. June. Maybe that was another time I invited you. Anyway, Uh, I got a couple events at the Trop. But so What does this have to do with the UConn-Purdue game? Then I go to bed at like 10 p.m. I have to be up at 4.30 for my flight. So yesterday – then I get home. I have to move my office and room. So I have to take down this whole thing, move all the furniture, take all the stuff off the wall, paint, all this. Other, and I was so hungover all day that I went to bed at 8 p.m. last night. Woke up at 6.30, checked the score. So glad I didn't watch it. Uh, first half was really good. So Zach Eady played uh, pretty much as well as you can play. 
Yeah. It's just UConn is just. Did so he have much. like thirty four points, thirty seven yeah. points? He was awesome, and he he was drawing fouls on all the UConn bigs. That's what he, he does. Kind of, he, I I don't really. I'm not gonna miss watching Zach Eady play college basketball. I didn't really find it super entertaining. My buddy was saying that. Uh, playing off the nickname Carl Malone, the mailman, we should call Zach Eady the mailbox because he just kind of posted down there and they just throw him the ball. Uh, but he got, oh, he got all. What are your thoughts? Do you think he's going to make it in the league? There yeah. was some interesting thoughts on the panel. I saw that. I saw that. Uh, I don't, I don't really think so, but all I can say is. Isn't that terrible then? So he doesn't get paid for college. What's he gonna do? Go back to Canada and sell cars? No, he can. He'll play in the NBA. I just don't think he's gonna be like. I don't think he's okay. gonna have like a long career. He's gonna get drafted by somebody, right? I would yeah. think so. But of they sure they acted like he was gonna be in China or somewhere else playing overseas. I think that I think that they were just being funny. Those that's a very funny show. You're oh. talking about Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley. Okay, yeah, those guys were super funny. Uh, UConn. Pulls it off. They blow him away. Good for the book because we were going to lose a ton on Purdue. And then Kelly, Kelly did nothing on this bet. I mean, she she didn't. It was my idea to do the thing. You complained about who the people voted for. You rooted against the bet. Right? I didn't you, root against yes, it. Yes, you did. You said you were going to root against it. You said <sighs> you didn't even know how much you had. And yet you still you still made about we, we tipped the ticket writers, obviously, but Kelly still made not enough. We should tip the ticket writers more. Actually, I had this discussion the other day about how much you should tip the ticket writers. We gave him 20 bucks. It was just one I ticket. Know. Really? I know. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't know. One percent, one percent is enough. But it's just one ticket. All right. Oh, I, had, what, I had a buddy ask me the other night. He's like, How much do I tip the ticket writers? And I was like, what it's did so you tip? When you won the Super Contest Mini, what did you tip the tellers? Like when I when I finished. That's a good question. That was a long time ago. Like when I got, I finished twenty second in Circa Millions, so I tipped the ticket riders five hundred bucks. See now the when when we when Brett and I had the proxy service, we tipped the ticket riders right. based on our tips from the proxy service because you know those guys were there used to be a point in time where like sign up it was just a different process right now it's a little bit more streamlined there's kiosks it's true you know there's was, apps was, uh, right was so it was a little water. different yeah. i'm trying to think now do i owe the 2014 ticket writers money did i tip no. i might not have tipped now i feel well, really some, bad sometimes people that win contests don't tip because they get a check so they don't have cash no i got a check yeah but I think Jay and I walked to the cage and I cashed it. And you cashed it? Well, I knew when I went over there to get my money that night, I brought cash. Because I, I just took a check. But I brought cash, so I give it to him. So tipping on the future bet, mm. I don't I don't really think that was that bad. I just I didn't want to tip more than that without checking with you. And I knew you were asleep because you weren't texting back. Yeah. Not that you would have cared. But no, I anyway. Have. But look, you I said, oh, let's put it this way. I sent Louie, our producer, for his birthday five times that to buy beers at the hockey game tonight. You know, Louis, Louis D'Onofrio, he's pretty, he doesn't I'm work gonna, as hard as the unit. We all know I, this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he, this is our season finale show, and Louis is not on the show, our season finale. It's his birthday. He's like 24. That's like a big birthday. It's like a big deal. Yeah. Well, Kelly won. I wrote so Kelly's profit on the whole thing, just so everybody knows, two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars, and she complained the whole time. That's why you're you're not relatable. You're not most people. I did happy. not complain the whole time. Most people I, would like to. I win thought money. they were little chalk eating weasels, right? Purdue well, they, was the odds on favorite at the time. No, they weren't. Purdue was. Per that's why I said no. the Purdue was the odds on oh, favorite. Purdue, I thought you said they were. Excuse me. No, I'm sorry. Purdue they was. weren't. Purdue, Purdue, Purdue was the odds on favorite yeah. at the time. They were second. Yeah, but I, you know, like I said, listen. They they sniffed it out. They knew I should have listened to our audience. They're super sharp. They knew this was going to be the chalkiest tournament ever. Double digit favorites, sixteen and three against uh, the amazing. spread. But you know what was interesting about the final four games, and then we can move on. Saturday, we were we really needed both favorites in the games. Now we wanted to knock Purdue out for the futures book, but as far as the games themselves, we wanted the two favorites to cover. Everybody bet NC State. Everybody then, bet NC State. Everybody bet NC State. 
and Alabama got a lot of public support as well. So we we were happy with uh, we were happy with the overall. Yeah, result. twelve. Listen, so I got got into it this morning with a buddy, and I he tweeted some different stuff. This whole net versus Ken Palm thing. Ken Palm's projected the winner four straight years now, and why college basketball should be using him for March Madness and not net because net is bullshit. But besides the point, uh, Ken Palm. May, I made the game nine and a half. Eight, nine, nine and a half, because I said I'm going to give him a little bump for how good they've been. I think he made the game seven. He made the game last night two. Two. Well, if we if we put up UConn minus two. Oh, God, I, I know. So, so well, we, that's we, what I'm saying. You're pay- so what I told everybody last night when I ended up not having a bet, I was like, why would I bet this? I've got UConn plus 750 in the national championship game. I'm not going to bet this. Well, we call that a – so we, we would call that a booking number. Meaning, like, yeah, like UConn probably shouldn't have been a seven to seven. Well, I guess now that I've watched the game, that was the red line. But okay. like, I, I don't know. But the, the number was inflated because of UConn. UConn, of course, they, because of what they've been able to do, and it still wasn't. But, and that's why. That's why. Last last comment on it, but that's why the rollover failed so badly. Because if they played at any point in the season, UConn would not have been an eight and a half point favorite against Illinois or a 12-point favorite against Alabama, or a 7-point favorite against Purdue. That's not what the lines would have been at any point in the season. That's, I mean, why, <sighs> that's why that backfired so much. But in the end, they were right to favor them by that much because they covered every spread. They never really had a moment in the whole tournament where it seemed like they were going to lose. It, it's amazing. Not at all. Like, no, nobody even had them on the ropes yeah. outside of the – Ten, first 10 minutes in the first half. A little bit, little bit of Alabama, a little bit of Illinois, first 10 minutes. Purdue, nice. there, you know, if you if you watch the replay like I did today, so I can pretend like I talked about it. But I got to be honest with our audience. Other shows, I got to kind of like play on it. With these guys, I feel mm-hmm. like I can just be my real self. And I love you guys for that. Our, our audience is pretty savvy. Do you want to do the Master starts Thursday, UFC 300 is Saturday. Okay. What do you want to talk about? What do you know? Uh, I don't know yeah. a lot about either. You know, I was actually well, talking about I thought, how I kind of I kind of uh, missed I summer of 2020. Doing, I thought you were doing master shows. All day. I did. I had to host a master show before this. Well, then, I've got, a, I've got some notes. Know. I've got okay. some notes. But what I was getting ready to say was I kind of miss that summer of 2020 when there was nothing else going on and I actually had to focus on UFC because it was awesome. And now I feel like yeah. I'm so out of the loop with all these other sports still going on. That they just they fall to the wayside, and that's just not fair. Dana White, I, I he deserves better because he, he deserves did better, better for you. us. You know, I'm nervous about telling you some of these UFC picks we got because, first of all, our best guy hasn't played anything this week. He has no oh boy, yet, which is strange because this is a really big event. But all these plays are on dogs, at where the well, almost all of them, one of them is not, are on dogs where the prices are coming down, and you have shown Kelly. <laughs> That you, I have shown you can't stomach the fact that you might lose when you bet an underdog. You can't, you, you're not, I, okay, you the, I can stomach it. What I don't like is when I lose by decision because some fucking dork of a judge got it wrong. That's what so, I don't like. Here, here's a, here's a completely funny, different. Here's a funny one from last Saturday. They did a fight night. Our best guy had a fight, a dog, obviously. It was like plus 145, plus 150. I, I thought so clearly that we had lost that I I was in my office on Saturday. I had the final four on one TV. I got the fight on the other one. I thought we had so clearly lost that I didn't even watch them read the scorecard. And then I just happened to look over at the TV and they were interviewing our guy. And I, I, I was texting with your guys. That Andrew. would never happen to me. I was texting Andrew and Chase and I was like, wait a minute, we won? Apparently the other guy... The live odds after the third round, the other guy was minus 7,500. And the judges I gave it to our guy. I would have been on the other guy. That, yeah, we that won. Kind of something happens to me. The, the last one, I had a guy that was like a $9 favorite mid-third round, and I somehow lost. Here's a good lesson. You you don't remember those, but all that shit balances out. It all balances think. out. Yes, it does. Not for me. We, I didn't oh, get the text stop. about the UFC winner. You you can't handle it when we lose. You get too emotional. Uh, they bet um, so they the main events Jamal Hill against Poetan. They bet Hill down a little bit. 
I don't know about that. I've, I've bet against Poetan before, and I've had very mixed results doing that. Uh, they bet Jessica Andrade from even to minus 140. I've met her. They keep betting Cody Garbrandt. They bet him at plus 270. Plus, this is the kind of bet Kelly can't stomach, this kind of bet. They bet a plus 270, a plus 255. He's plus 240. And then one today, they bet Charles Oliveira, the former champ, at 2-1. to one. And we moved down to plus 180. Really sharp guy bet that. And then one favorite, speaking of fighters we've met, you know, I once played golf with Aljamain Sterling when he was the champion. And, and it, your friend Andy was there, and he didn't know who he was. Oh, but, that yeah. doesn't surprise oh, yeah. me at all. So we're, play, so we're playing golf. It's me and Andy and Brett Okamoto. And whoever our fourth guy was canceled. Andy and I were already at the course drinking a beer. And we told Brett, just invite anybody else. So he invites, right. he invites Aljamain Sterling, and Andy doesn't know who he is. So he hears us talking about fighting on the first few holes, and then he's like, he's riding in my car. He's like, who is that guy? I'm like, that's, that's fucking Aljamain Sterling, you moron. Uh, <laughs> and they bet Aljamain. Okay. See, now, sometimes like when people don't know athletes because they wear a helmet on a regular basis, and it's tough to like see their face. Like yeah. UFC fighters, you're like right up in their face. At the time, he was the 135-pound champion. Too. Idiot. At the God, time, Andy's like, so dumb. When we were golfing, he was the champ. And then Brett, Brett got Did, me jammed he up. To work in boxing, I know UFC is not boxing, but it's like they're like side by side. So, oh God, I'm embarrassed. So, I'm embarrassed. So Aljo, He's not my friend. He also went to KU. I'm not friends with KU grads. Aljo, or KU fans that pretend to be grads. He, Did he actually he go remember, there? Yeah, and he went to KU. He, Did he? Okay. Yeah, he did. So Aljo won the belt by like a DQ and then they were going to have the rematch and he was a big underdog in the rematch. And he was in this, that in between time was when we played golf. And at one point he asked me what the price was on him in the rematch in which he was a big dog. <laughs> and I sheepishly was like, ah, like two to one. And <laughs> you would, <laughs> but, you would just got to tell people the truth. He won that fight, though. He did win that fight. He lost the yeah, belt. Yeah, because he probably was like, fuck this. I'm an underdog. I'm going to whoop this guy's yeah. ass. He lost the fight. He lost the belt to Sean O'Malley after Sean O'Malley's champion. But they bet Sterling from minus 130 to minus 170 UFC 300 this weekend at T-Mobile Arena. Are you going to watch it at least? Uh, We'll see. I'll probably end up going. I I'm My gonna... dad uh, joined this new private club. Golf? And... Uh, they have, like, I wouldn't call it a casino night because it's not, like, blackjack and stuff. The last time I was there is when I posted about the pull tabs. Mm -hmm. So they're doing, like, all these different, like, random card games and cheap, like, drunk bar things. I'll see if they'll put the UFC fights on, but that's the other thing. East Coast, I love it for football. UFC is a little tough. Well, it, it's pay-per-view, too, just FYI. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they're not going to put it on. There's a pay-per-view. I'll probably, hopefully the ticket prices go down. Because I'm not, I'm not like you. I'm a regular, a regular bloke. You know, I can't afford to go to all these fancy If events. you think I've ever paid to go to a UFC event, you could not be more wrong. I have. I paid. You should I just paid, ask for a media pass. Well, this is a long time ago. I paid, I paid through my teeth to go to McGregor Hall, though. Oh, my God. I was See, so, I would, no. I was so mad at the, after that fight. Not because I, like don't like conor mcgregor but the fight ended in 13 seconds yeah I'd spent, I'd spent all this money to go i wanted to watch these guys dance around and uh, trade some shots Ugh. uh that's it for ufc Tell, so what do you have on the masters you're you're hosting shows but you don't have any opinions or bets or yeah. anything what are you doing i got a few things give them to me you want it well yeah. i don't have I, I, do you want my bets well i, don't, I want I want two things from you. No, three. I want your okay. bets, and I want who you think's going to win, and I want to know who we're going to boost because I'm going to do a KIV boost to jinx the thing. Oh, great! Superbook. So you're going to give me a, you got to give me a guy to win. Like Chris Felica gave me three guys, okay. and we we figured out what the odds would be of any one of those three guys winning, and then we boosted it up. You could do okay, that. Okay, so so couple things that I'm going to do. I've got. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six matchups, I bet. Oh, matchups. I've got my Splash Sports contest with Pam, $50 buy-in. Pam Maldonado. 
Pam Maldonado and I are doing it because she does golf, right? She's got a good golf following. She does. I don't really have a golf following. I've got degenerate gambler following. So this is where they can fuse together. Um, so it's 50 bucks. You have 33 entries. You can pick six golfers from six different tiers. Okay. And then your worst golfer, so the high, the golfer with the highest score gets to go bye-bye. It's kind of tough. I've set a couple of lineups already. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. I think I'm going to do four or five total. We could do one if you want. A little team, a little, little masters one if you want. Um, but right now, there's like nobody signed up for it. It's weird. So it's going to be what interesting. Is it, tell me again, what does it cost to be in it? 50 bucks. Splashsports.com backslash Kelly in Vegas. Is that worth your time? $50? To win 50000 Oh, well, top 25 50. get paid. So, sorry, top 25 get paid. Let me actually look at the whole pay structure one more know, time. That just seems beneath your, your – Okay, level. first place first place wins 10 grand. Second place, 7,500. Third place, 6 grand. Fourth place, 4 grand. 2,500 for fifth place. 1,500 and 6 through 10th. 1,000 through 11 through 20th. 21st through 25th gets 500 bucks. So, yeah, okay. for, for one weekend in a sport that I don't know – Four four guys chopped the sixty four grand in the Sweet Sixteen, and five guys chopped the seventy five grand in the regular March Madness, and those were twenty five dollar buy ins. That's good money. Uh, yeah. Give me your give me your matchups here, your matchup bets. Okay, so here are so we're, we're, my matchups. So you, you've made a big point. Oh, by the way, the Indians tied the game. Okay, you made a big you made a big point to to consistently mention that you don't know anything about golf. So when you say you got six matchup bets, like where are we? Are you just throwing darts at a board? What are you doing? I am not throwing darts at a board. I have okay. uh, talked to a couple guys that I really trust at Wager Talk, and okay. a couple of these are Bretts, and then a couple of these I've talked to with Pam. So I like to talk with other people that know what they're doing, and then also still make my own bets. A couple what, what? of them that I'm not going to give you because they're not mine, but I'll give yeah. you the six that I played that are mine because what I'm doing is looking to fade. A few guys. Go ahead. And then I've got a follow-up question about Brett. Okay, so Tiger Woods not to make the cut. Okay, that now that uh, I'm not I don't mean to interrupt you, but I've got a list that I wrote down of four sharp plays I saw here. And okay. one of them is Tiger Woods to miss the cut. So I that's funny you say that. So I was commenting on Pam's golf video. She talked about like, hey, well, who's got value? Who doesn't? She's like, Look, I know Tiger looks like he has value. And I'm like, Tiger absolutely has no value. I have not handicap this tournament whatsoever give me tiger to miss the cut and some guy immediately jumped in and was like i'll bet you a hundred dollars and i'm like how could you even my even money it's minus 140 on my but site. here's the here's the problem you got so tiger woods to miss the cut is a sharp bet that i've seen here in las vegas but if you bet that you've got to spend thursday and friday rooting against tiger woods i can't do that i love tiger woods. Uh, well i'm hoping he just withdraws Instead of I, having I, against him. I can't I love Tiger Woods too much. I can't I cannot join you on that one. Go no ahead. problem. Uh and then so then I also bet against him in his matchup with Phil Mickelson. Yeah. I laid 30 or I'm sorry, I laid minus 130 with Phil. Phil minus 30 versus Tiger. Also looking to fade a little Rory McElroy. Um yes. so I took a little John Rom action at even money. John I know is not going to win it. Guys don't win back to back, right? They just don't. But well, I still UConn think... did. <laughs> okay. UConn did, but UConn is not in Augusta with crappy <laughs> weather on Thursday and Friday. All right. And then I have the gala over Colin Morikawa, okay. Max Homa over Colin Morikawa. And then one of the guys that Brett liked, which I also put in my splash sports lineup. I think he was a tier six guy is Ben Ain and Ben Ann. By Yong An, but the, he goes by Ben oh. An, Ben On. Yeah. Okay. And then um, okay, I cool. like Gary Woodland over Bubba Watson. That's a homer play. The Gary yes. Woodland. That's homer. This oh, yeah, is well, a homer play. I'll, I'll, I'll very I like Gary to have a nice bounce back. Gary traditionally has done very well here at the Masters. Yeah, yes. So I like that. And then. Oh, you're still going. Um. What else? There was one other thing I wanted to mention. No, that's it. That's all I got. We had some sharp money. I mentioned Tiger to miss the cut. So Jordan Spieth, minus 25 against Kepka, got that. Aberg, minus 105 against Neiman. 
that one got bet as well. And th- and they keep betting us under on the lowest completed round, which I believe is 64 and a half. They keep betting under what the lowest completed round will be in this tournament. Big liabilities for us, Xander Shopley. They always bet on Xander. So I like Xander. Four- I put him in my lineups. He's down to 14 to 1 from 25. They keep betting Hideki Matsuyama. You know, he's the 21 champion here. He's been bet down all the way from 50 to 1 to 18 to 1. And they bet Tiger Woods at 150 to 1. I'll give you the ticket count leaders. Scheffler obviously is going to get the most tickets. Scheffler is 9 to 2 right now. That's insane. I know he's really good, but what do you think about this? Uh, There's like some stuff going around on the internet. His wife's about to have their first baby. Like, what if she. Goes into labor on Sunday, and he's like, see ya, I'm out. Well, they said that about Sam Burns as well, right? Yeah, but his wife's already had one baby, so I feel like your first baby is a little different than your second. Like, I feel like men are like, eh, she'll be fine. I'll I'll finish up this round, and then get on a private jet to go see her. So if you had a second son or daughter, you wouldn't care about the birth? No, what I'm saying is, like, the the birth of the first one is, like, such a big deal, (laughs) and then, like, guys – Get a little more comfortable, and it's like not as a big of a deal. Are you saying that your dad, Mr. Stewart, when you were born, he was just like whatever because you were like his fourth? No, no, no. He actually was excited for my birth because he got to be in there. Okay. Because that was like when they finally started letting men be in the room. Uh. So he was like really excited. It was like, like I don't know. He got to cut the cord. He even told me that I was actually shocked because I would have put definite. I would have laid it that he was not in the room, but he was. Take account leaders are Scheffler, Kepka, Hovland, Xander, and Kelly's guy, Rory McElroy. Yeah, Rory's not gonna win, right? I mean, no. they can they can clip it out and make us look foolish if he wins. That'd be funny. Yes. But he's not gonna win. Right? No way. He's not gonna win. Uh, uh, just, I don't you see it. Do the, you wanna do the mailbag segment? Yeah, we don't have a lot of mailbag, but that's okay because we don't have a lot of time. Sorry, I'm betting I think people these. are I think people are burnt out on the show. They're sick of our shit. Yeah, because, like, that's why... So are we, we not were... doing any shows this summer, then? Is that what you're implying? No, I'll do a show. Oh, okay. uh, it's, up, it's up to you. I don't care. But we don't... We're not doing anything next week, right? All right, know. which... Vince... Yeah. No, we're not doing anything next week. Vince and PGH wants to know, we already reported on UFC 300, yeah. which bouts are you looking forward to the most? Uh, I think if, if I do go, I think it'll be cool to see Bo Nickel. I haven't seen him fight, although he's a big favorite. I haven't seen him. I'd have to say the main event. You know, one of those guys is going to probably get KO'd. I think Uh-oh. an interesting fight, Kayla Harrison is making her UFC debut. She is fighting Holly Holm. I think that'll be interesting, too. Oh, Holly's, like, so, getting up yeah. there. Yeah, so there, it's, a, it's a very deep card. It doesn't have – like, I went to UFC 200, and originally it was going to be John Jones, Cormier, and Brock Lesnar fought. And it was all these like really, really big fights. Uh, Jones, of course, wasn't able to fight that night, but they still had Lesnar and, and Anderson Silva ended up fighting Cormier and Frankie Edgar fought Jose Aldo. It was a great card. This okay. one doesn't this one doesn't have like the really high end fights, but it does have a lot of really good fights. I think it'll be a fun night. If I can afford it. Right. Five Kevin Boss wants to know for the three underdogs, who is your favorite? Jim Miller. Max Holloway, Charles DeBronx. I love Max Holloway, but I, I just, it's hard for me to picture him moving up in a weight and beating Justin Gaethje. I don't, I mean, he's only like plus 140, but I, I would say of those three, I, I would have to go with DuBronx because I've seen sharp players betting on DuBronx. You have. Did you forget to I, tell us that? That's Charles Oliveira. That's the same person. Oh. It's okay. DuBronx is his nickname. No, that's, that's fine. DuBronx is his nickname. Thank you. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was like, did not tell me that. I uh, got that from down from two to one. All right, reload sports on X says, how was the sports experience at Austin bon- Boston Harbor compared to the Westgate? Well, that's a great question. Um, it was fine. So here's the, the thing. They have like a VIP area. We didn't ask for it. We just sat at the high top tables to watch the women's game. It was fine. TVs are there. Good. They got the ticker going. They had four or five people behind the counter if you wanted to go up and make a bet uh, since they don't have the phone app anymore. But, like, the Westgate's just different. Like, I can't explain it. Like, it's, like, big, comfy chairs. I have a waitress. Like, I kept having to ask Chris because I was too hungover to, like, go get stuff from the bar. Like, his wife, when, you know, like, it just was, like, it not 
like a VIP experience. It was just more of so like you were, a, making, you were making Chris and his wife fetch you drinks. No, no. Chris's wife was like, Hey, can you get me a water when you go up to get more vivas? And then like he came back and she's like, Did you get me a water? And he's like, No. And he just like sits down because it's such a pain in the ass to go to the bar. I've never, never been there. Really. I heard no, I, I've it heard, fine. It, I've heard listen, they, it looks just like the win in Vegas. Oh, uh, except the service isn't as good and the, the people aren't as classy. Well, that's a really nice thing to say, isn't it? I mean, that's a great that's a great way to end the show. Uh, to- Seahawks 2611 on X says, any super contest changes to announce yet? There are going to be changes. I can't announce them, though. Why? Because they're not official yet. They but can you give a- us like a hint as to what cool things, they what haven't differences, been I can't what's really. being discussed? It hasn't been agreed to by all parties, though. I can't. I just can't. Throw us a fucking bone here, John Murray. It's the well, last we've ta- show. We've talked about all sorts of different things, and, uh, even including a college contest, which I don't really. I'm not really keen on. Well, I don't need to do a college contest because I want us to do a college contest on Splash Sports. You want us so to do that, a contest. Yeah, me. And I don't you. think. Do people like college? Co- I mean, I like college contests. I, I have won a college contest. I play in college contests. Do people like them though? I don't know. I guess we'll have to ask our audience. It just it seems, seems like everybody. Sharp. It just seems like everybody loves the NFL. That's except for. I like your reverse survivor idea, where you can only pick the loser. Well, I, I think the, that's a cool idea. I don't know if they're going to let me do it. I don't know how it, how to implement it, but I like that idea probably the best. I got to see if the Splash Sports guys can implement it if the Superbook doesn't allow you to do it. Well, it should be easy, right? I mean, right now it's all all you have to do is set it up to where you can only pick a team once, and you have to pick right. them to win. So you should be able so you to, have to pick them to lose. Yeah. But, it just has to be reverse graded. And then not be able to pick them again. That's really the okay. only fixes you would need to do. I don't think it'd be that hard. Sweet. What, uh, well, what do you want? I think to we should do a Kelly and Murray contest. I think we should do a college football contest. I think Pam and I might do an NFL contest. Just, you know, like a little cheaper, you know, a thousand bucks. Got to go to Vegas. Sign up is, is a little much. I would highly recommend people doing that, but maybe do like a $250 kind of contest, kind of deal with her and I, because we got our asses kicked last year in the NFL, as you know. Um, maybe give yeah, myself some bragging rights really, to come back. I never understood it because you and I talk all the time, and I like I couldn't like lose in the NFL last season. And then every You week, picked one game a week, and if I just stuck with myself with one game a week, it would have been a lot better. One game a week is hard in the NFL. The NFL's tough. The NFL's tough. What do you want to tell the people out there? What What's happening next? I don't know what's happening next. That is a great question. John Murray and I would love to bring back the show. We mm-hmm. got some moving parts. We got to talk to Superbook. We got to talk to Wager Talk. We got to talk to the Westgate, see what's going on. Um, and we'll let you guys like, know. A lot of big wigs, a lot of suits. A lot People far mm-hmm. more important than John Murray have oh, to make everybody, decisions. Everybody here is more important. I was just in the Westgate. Uh, we, I'm in. The, I'm part of I'm the Westgate Las Vegas Executive Committee, and we just had our, our meeting a couple hours ago. And I was looking around, just thinking about how I am the least important person here. I Wait, think for, it, you might have been. Oh, I was. I was. Okay, good. So we've got as long a, as you know your role. No, I do. So we've got to right. get all those important people to sign off on it. We'll bring the show back when they do. Sounds great. I'm excited. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Hopefully we made you a little bit of money. And uh, yeah, shout out to you fucking chalk-eating weasels for UConn. Pretty good pick. <laughs>